Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, August 10th, 2021. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely. Subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slade, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Joes? Present. Mr. McMillian? Ms. Hen? Mr. Kuhn? Here. Mr. Offerman? Present. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Ms. Slade, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. Boswell McComas. Ms. Mildred Charlie Green. Present. Ms. Lowry. Present. Dr. Scriven. Present. Dr. Wheatley Phillip. Dr. Yarborough. Dr. Zarchin. Present. Ms. Howie. Ms. Byers. Ms. Byers. Dr. Jones. Present. Dr. Roberts. Present. Mr. Dixit. Present. Ms. Lewis. Present. Mr. Patillo. Present. Mr. Saris. Present. Ms. Shea. Present. Ms. Levenstein. Present. Mr. Plate. Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Jean Filbert. Thank you. Anyone this else? Is Rod Mc this is Rod McMillian. I'm in now. All right. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you. Did I miss any? Dr. Boswell, are you in the meeting now? I, I am. Thank you, Susan. I'm so sorry. I just logged in. Thank you, everyone. No, that's OK. Anyone else? I think that's it, Ms. Joes. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Welcome, everybody to the August 10th Building and Contracts Committee meeting. Mr. Saris, please state your name for the record and proceed with presenting the first contract. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This is George Saris, Executive Director of Fiscal Services. Uh, the first item we have this evening is a contract modification for uh, MWE 800-21 Math Support and intervention for elementary students. Uh, we are requesting that spending authority uh, be increased by uh, $1.6 million, bringing total contract spending authority to $1,986,750 with the one vendor approved by the board in August 2020.
Are there any questions, committee members? Please state your name and question. Hi, this is Mr. Kuhn. I have a question. Um, I'll start out by by asking you know, how does this math program first in math differ from Dreambox? I think Ms. Shea would uh, be best able to respond, Mr. Kuhn. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the question, Mr. Kuhn. Um, well, first I would say it's a different program from a different vendor. Um, and for the purpose of this committee, I would also offer it's quite different in cost uh, for the individual student. In terms of the actual programming, the similarities are that it is adaptive, so it does respond to the students as they complete different math problems and give them directive feedback. Um, it includes um, a stronger alignment for the teachers in terms of being able to provide specific content aligned to the units of instruction or make changes in the sequence. Uh, teachers have a little bit more control with first in math. And it also includes a parent portal component uh, where families are able to see much more of the progress their students are making. Um, this program is um, almost uniquely focused, although there are other areas, it places a heavy emphasis on fact fluency and the development of fluency as um, distributed practice in math. Uh, so, so those are some of the specific ways that it differs. I don't know if you have more questions around that. I would just say, are there, are there, is there evidence that this program actually works and provides outcomes that we are interested in? Yes, so I can share with you, it's only been our first year, and of course we all know the challenges that this year presented in numerous ways. Um, but in spite of those challenges, we had out of 108 schools, 103 schools showed significant progress on the pre and post test data for their fact fluencies. Um, as a system, our students completed over 84 million math problems with facts and were able to demonstrate growth. We as a system, we have the school breakdown as well, but in the aggregate as a system, we demonstrated growth in every category in terms of students moving from uh, basic to proficient, emerging to proficient to extending. Uh, so we showed growth in all four of those quartiles and 103 out of 108 of our schools showed um, growth from the pre and post test surveys. Okay, so I guess part of my question regarding that, and I appreciate that information, but sure. to put it in context, did you, I, I'm guessing you tested at the beginning and at the end of the school year, so you would expect yes, sir. So the, significant the, yeah, growth. So when I mentioned the pre and post test survey, they happen at the very beginning of the program, students complete a pre-test, and then at the end of their, um, in June, they complete a post test. That's correct. We didn't, however, obviously over time, we would also look to see is this having an impact on some of our other stakes assessments, things like MAP and MCAP, of course, would also be a part of our goal. Um, but of course, as you well know, we didn't have those measures this year. Right, um, so I appreciate your answers. Thank you. I'll, sure. I'll just, you know, I have to, to share that I'm, I'm leery um, uh, about this program. Um, and I'm wondering if besides the, I guess, single year we have experience with it, um, if, if there's other information outside of BCPS that is kind of provides results and shows, you know, a basis for us to say that there is evidence that this indeed works and that we should invest in this. That's that's really just what I'm trying to get to. Sure. Well, so if you're asking if the vendor itself has um, evidence, of course, they've had um, multiple studies do done to show the evidence in other school districts that we use as part of that basis. Um, I thought specifically you were asking for our data here. Um, well, we are. I appreciate your data. Don't sure, get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely do. Um, we are also, you know, just to put it in context, this um, program is about $7 a student and they're able to use it all year. We use it for part of our summer programming as well as our summer learning hike for students that had ongoing practice. And so that winds up being about two cents a day for our students to have opportunities for completing those facts um, that we know from the common common core or college and career ready standards are critical for developing that automaticity and fluency. Um, so, and we are also able, I, I know it's on the um, exhibit, 
Last year we were able to use grant funding from the tutoring grant. This year we're actually able to use and moving forward Title IV grant funds, which talks specifically about using those funds for those individualized and responsive programs. And the last thing that I would offer is that we are this year in particular very focused on that idea of personalized learning. We know that the pandemic and the disruption to learning has had differential impact on lots of our students. And so we need to provide students, families, and their teachers with lots of different opportunities opportunities and resources to personalize that learning. Um, I truly believe that this is a supplement to our high evidence, um, high quality curriculum that we're now going to have in place in Bridges from K to 5 really allows us to, to move forward with that progress. Thank you. Thanks. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Shea. And I sure. must note this does come recommended from the curriculum committee or is this an extension to an existing contract? This is an extension to an existing contract. We did not represent it this year to the curriculum committee. All right, thank you. Uh, are there any other questions for uh, committee members? There being no further questions, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Saris, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Yes, uh, the next item is a new contract, JBO 715-21. Tier two or three phonics based interventions. This is a new contract uh, for the Office of English Language Arts. Approval is requested for a five year contract with three recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $470,000. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Committee members, are there any questions? Hi again, this is Mr. Kuhn. Um, I, I would just like uh, some insight into this. Uh, we received some emails regarding this this today. The, the entire board has, if not last night. And um, I was hoping Ms. Shea um, uh, perhaps could sit here and, and, and discuss how this is going to be utilized. And I know we're talking about tier two and tier three, so my guess is do we already have tier one and how how has it been executed? Sure, thank you for the question, Mr. Kuhn. Um, and I will just offer at the outset, I'm joined today by Jeannie Filbert. She is the literacy specialist in the ELA office, so she's here to add to anything with her expertise that I forget. Um, so as this committee and this board knows, uh, we have been committed in partnership between ELA and special education for a number of years. And we have a number of initiatives and contracts because we know that the development of our literacy skills for our students is of the utmost importance. This um, contract provides an opportunity for us to continue that uh, multi-tiered systems of support continuum of resources. So these specifically are for tier two and tier three. So as you know, again, thanks to the commitment and support of the board, we have recently implemented a tier one resource of open court phonics in our grades K through three. Um, our goal over the long term is that having a highly um, high quality evidence based program in phonics and phonological awareness, phonemic awareness and fluency will help over time change the numbers that we see right now. Um, there's no denying that we have significant work to do in providing our students with um, a scientifically based reading program. What these programs offer are for our students in middle and high school who did not have the benefit of that evidence-based high quality phonics program in their primary grades, who now exhibit gaps in those areas of phonemic awareness and phonics. Um, it also provides an opportunity for us to have the multi-sensory programs in place, as is the case with Wilson Reading Systems, that we know are critical for students that have language-based um, learning disabilities, including but not limited to dyslexia, for example. Um, so you know that between our Gillingham training, our letters training, our open court phonics contracts, we've had a number of resources, and this is allowing us to continue to provide that menu of resources for students in our middle and high school grades who are still demonstrating that need. 
Um, the concern that was raised in one of the emails that I was copied on, I would like to take the opportunity to, to address because it is critical that while we spend resources having those high quality evidence-based resources in place, which is part of what this contract allows, it's also equally critical that we provide the high quality professional learning. We're talking about our most intensive students. These are students in our secondary grades for whom we have not met their needs in literacy. And so this is really um, when we talk about uh, identifying students in need of our most intensive support, we also know that their teachers are in need of the most highly skilled training. Um, this contract, um, in particular the Wilson reading portion, does include, which was one of the questions that came up, not only the initial three-day training, which three days does sound like a lot, but we're talking about an incredibly highly skilled program, um, and it's not enough. It's a good start, and it does allow teachers to get started with the program, but in order to ensure fidelity of implementation, we have also built into the spending authority an opportunity for a select group of teachers to continue to pursue what's called level one certification from Wilson Reading. That can be upwards of nine hours of training. Um, it is a significant commitment on the part of the teachers. It is also a significant investment, um, but it's one that's really necessary because we're talking about the needs of our most intensive um, readers. And so part of the other two programs that you'll see on this list, again, is to offer a menu. We know that our readers come with lots of different needs. Um, we have done a really good job of training our teachers to develop the skills needed to diagnose those reading needs. And you've heard me talk endlessly, and you'll probably remember my pipe cleaner example, um, about the need for us to then match that diagnostic information with a high quality program that then is implemented with fidelity and where teachers are providing provided that support. So two of the other programs on here um, offer the opportunity for more of a tier two approach. So that's where language live might come in, where students might have smaller gaps across the spectrum of reading areas, whereas that Wilson reading system is much more intensive in that tier three support. Um, the other question that has come up, um, and, and certainly you can add to it, but I think we might be referencing the same questions, um, is about the fidelity of implementation in terms of scheduling. So we do recommend that this is done in very small group settings, either individually or in a small group setting. We recommend to schools and work diligently to support schools with scheduling to try to keep that class size at no more than six students. We would prefer it to be even smaller, but we know that while we're playing um, catch up in terms of providing those training opportunities for teachers. We work collaboratively with schools to help support that. And then last but not least, in the office, we do have staff that are in a position to support, including um, Ms. Felbert, who I'm going to invite to share if there's anything that I've forgotten or that she wants to add to anything I've shared. Thank you, Ms. Shea. So, um, Basically everything that Ms. Shea shared, um, it is a tremendous amount of professional learning, but it is valuable to it's it, it through the training that they receive um, in that level one certification. They also are identified as a Wilson dyslexia practitioner, which basically recognizes that teacher as being prepared to diagnostically teach students that have language based learning disabilities. So um, it is very intensive, but we absolutely recognize the need um, for that extensive training to to follow that initial three day. Thank you. How many teachers are you expecting to train right off the bat in this? So the initial three day training, I believe the original quote is for 30 teachers. We have some schools that already have at least one teacher trained to provide this, so we want to make sure that we're um, that's our goal is to ensure that in terms of the intensive 90 hours plus, I believe the spending authority we're hoping to do a group of at least eight educators each year, um, but Ms. Felbert can correct me if those numbers are wrong. That is accurate. So just following on this, this 90 hours, is this is this a classroom led instruction or is this some kind of online learning? So it's both actually great question. It's really intensive and so I, I really want to make sure that I underscore that it's a huge commitment on the part of the educator and financially on the part of the system. Um, it includes additional professional learning. It also includes online coursework, um, formal observation from a Wilson reading 
um, specialist, a district certified level trainer, and it also requires that they're working individually one on one with a student um, sort of outside their assigned time so that they can achieve that certification. So hmm. it's uh, multifaceted and a tremendous investment in the teacher. Um, it's also important that we as a district are thinking about sustainability. So it's a significant investment on in that individual, but then we also have to think about sustainability about that individual's commitment to um, staying in that position, which is often a challenge. Fair enough. Thank you. I guess my last question, because I know we have limited time and, and a sure. lot of other things to get through. Um, why? why don't we teach them all right off the bat because it, it feels like if we don't, we're not certifying all the teachers then we're waiting two or three years before we're getting you know someone with the depth of the knowledge to really utilize this tool correctly for the students i don't understand why we don't just ask for all the money now and do it now so that's a great question. Um, I mean, the, the, the funding is the consideration, but it's also the consideration of the individuals. Um, we, this requires a commitment on the part of teachers to be willing to do it. It's not something that we can do wholly within their duty day. It requires a lot of external commitment. Um, but the primary reason was fiscal in nature. For one individual teacher to go through this certification, Ms. Philbert might have to correct me on my numbers, but I think it's close to $3,000 um, and that doesn't include the materials. That's just for the training. It also requires, because of what I've described, so if you think about the need for those observations and the ongoing classroom visits and coaching, um, to be able to sustain that with multiple teachers in multiple buildings would require almost a full-time staff member that we, we don't currently have. And, and I do want to also offer the initial training, while it's not sufficient and we can't be finished, it does provide enough for teachers to begin teaching this. It's just then our responsibility to continue that work. Thank you. Sure. Ms. Shea, you, I Ms. have a question. This is Mr. McMillian. Ms. Hi, Jones, Mr. McMillian. Okay? Yes, go uh, ahead, Mr. McMillian. Uh, Ms. Shea, have we talked to MSDE about these 90 hours and somehow giving credit, MSDE credits to these teachers at some, you know, there's a little bit of financial uh, motivation to take these, these 90 hours. Yes, we have had, that's a great question, Mr. McMillian. I um, mean, it gives me an opportunity for two parts. We have talked with MSDE as well as some of our university partners about trying to create like a certificate option where teachers could earn continuing education credits or even ultimately leading to a certificate for that. Um, so we've had conversations. We have not finalized anything or had any agreement, but we have initiated those conversations both with um, members from the state, but also university partners. And it gives me an opportunity to also mention that we also engage with our university partners in the state about the need to change teacher preparation programs um, so that we are building upon a much more solid foundation of the science of reading rather than trying to spend the funds and the time after the effects um, playing catch up with teachers. They can, yep. okay. um, I will say that the online coursework that I mentioned, they can get three credits for completing the online course, um, which would apply for steps one through three, and then they can earn an additional three credits if they complete the online coursework um, for sections four through six. So there is some built in, but in terms of the entirety of it, um, that is an ongoing conversation. Okay, and that's that's great. And But I'm curious also, as you mentioned that, if if they go ahead and complete the 90 hours now and then at some point the MSDE or a college you know gets involved then in with accreditation would that be retroactive it, it's a great question what I will tell you becomes challenging just off the bat I don't know specifically and I can certainly take that back what I will say is that teachers cannot receive credit and be paid so I think that would be one of the challenges that we would have to work through Okay, but it's a so great question and one I can certainly hours. pursue. I didn't, pick up their, I didn't pick up on that. So they're paid for the 90 hours. Right. So if we are requiring them to attend outside training or to do anything outside their duty day, we are required to use our funding to pay for that, um, which is also why it becomes a challenge because we pay not only the external contractor providing it, but then also those stipends. Um, so typically okay. when teachers, teachers have to choose, and you may remember this, to earn credit or um, be paid. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Right, but it's a great question I can take back. 
Uh, Ms. Shea, this is Mr. Kuhn. Just to follow on, I'm Hi. sorry. Um, if if they walk away with a certification, um, that that may not be actual college credit. I think that's what you're speaking of, but it's still a certification that is of value uh, to the organization and to the teacher. Is that correct? It is of value. So the credits I was referencing for the online course is part of the continuing education credit. So it isn't really college credits, like you said, but it is graduate credits in the continuing education piece. But the part you mentioned about it's an ex extensive value to the individual and the system. And in fact, while I don't have numbers in front of me, um, some of what staff have shared over a number of years is we have had the experience where we've invested in uh, supporting teachers to earn that level um, one certification and then they leave because oftentimes it is much more of a financial benefit to the individual to do that in a in a private setting. So that is um, something that we do um, have to balance. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Shea. Um, sure. Thank you for the time. Mr. Sarris, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Yes, the next item LKs 422-19 football and lacrosse equipment reconditioning. This is a modification to exercise the first year of two one-year options uh, and extend the contract through August 31 of 2022. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Mr. McMillian, do you have any questions? Any other questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Sarris, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Ms. Thank Jones, you. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Ms. Jones, I'm sorry. I knew you had a question. I'm, All right, go ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm always, you know, and I, I don't have, I'm, I'm going in between phones and screens and different stuff, but my question be, does, with the lacrosse equipment, does that go, does that apply to all 24 high schools? You know, can't is that every year thing, every season thing? At the end, if it if a if the lacrosse equipment hasn't met its shelf life, or all is, is all that equipment that's being used each year going out like it does with football helmets? I th um, I think Mr. Sai would be best to answer that question, but I do believe this contract is to meet the needs of the entire system. That, yes, that's yes. correct, Mr. Saris. Yeah. Go ahead, Mary. Uh, oh, thank you, uh, Dr. Scrimmins. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. And Mike Sai is with us. He's uh, on the phone. So I I believe, Mike, uh, you do have audio now. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank oh, you. Okay. So, so the answer, I think three people answered. The answer is yes. Um, uh, it goes out to all. Uh, we try to rotate the lacrosse in uh, so that we can get that. Uh, team. The, the lacrosse stuff um, equipment doesn't have a shelf life like football does in terms of the 10 years, but we do want to make sure that um, we are following NOXIE guidelines and, and as it relates to the student safety. So, so Mr. Sai, does that mean like with football, if a kid wears a football helmet, you know, for a day or a week or the whole season, that helmet goes out at the end of the football season, be reconditioned. Does that apply to yes. lacrosse helmets too, the same way? No, it doesn't is apply that a yes? to lacrosse helmets the same. No, it does not apply to lacrosse okay. helmets the same way. Okay, so how does it apply to lacrosse helmets? Or does it at all? It doesn't at all, but again, we look at the condition of the helmets and we send it out based on the needs of the condition uh, of each helmet. Okay, now do are kids still wearing lacrosse shoulder pads? Yes. Do those get sent out? No, just helmets. OK, same thank with, you. Same with football. Only helmets are being sent out for football for reconditioning. And again, that's based off the Noxie standards uh, for safety of athletic equipment. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Uh, Mr. Sarris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. The next item, LKO-417-18, Active Assailant Training, and this is a consent to the assignment of this contract from the Alice Training Institute to Navigate 360 LLC 
as a result of a corporate acquisition. Thank you, Mr. Service Committee members. Do you have any questions? Um, I have a quick question. This is an existing contract, Mr. Sarris, is that correct? That's being modified? Uh, correct, only modified to the extent of the name of the contracted party. The dollars and the tent and the term do not change. Thank you. Um, hearing no more questions, Mr. Sarris, please proceed with the next contract, please. Thank you. Uh, the next item, ARA 223-19, Social Emotional Mindfulness Based Intervention. Uh, this is a contract modification uh, to provide for continued social emotional support services for the Office of School Climate. Approval is requested to extend this contract for four months with one vendor awarded uh, by the board in August 2019 uh, to allow for us to issue a new RFP. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Committee members, do you have any questions? Mr. Sarris, um, this contract that's being extended because I guess the RFP is going to take a while. Is this training the social emotional learning just for staff or is that for students as well? Um, let me see here. So this is um, providing uh, to both parents and staff uh, in the uh, for mindfulness and other skills throughout the community. So it's for parents as well? So it's, yes, it's school staff, students, and families. Do we know how many parents actually use this contract or have used it? Um, I would have to defer to Dr. Zarchin if he has that information. I do not have that information right now, but I can certainly get that and bring it back. OK, if you could bring that um, it, that data back to the board prior to the next contract, that would help us. Be happy to. Uh, thank you. So hearing no more questions, Mr. Saros, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. Thank you. The next item, LKO 403-21, frozen weekly meal kits for students studying virtually. This is a new competitively big contract for frozen weekly meal kits to students studying virtually uh, for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. We are requesting a five-year contract with two recommended vendors and contract spending authority of $1.75 million. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Committee members, do you have any questions? Uh, thank you, this is Mr. Kuhn. Mr. Sarris, um, how many how many meal kits do we get for this and do we expect to be providing? So uh, I believe we have estimated um, about 140,000 meals um, and that would in, uh, in, for the upcoming school year. Um, and the meals are, will provide breakfast, frozen breakfast and lunch for students who elect to receive those meals while studying in the virtual instruction program. OK, so so that's per year. Yes, and it is it's an estimate. Uh, because not every student who's participating may want to uh, take advantage of that uh, service. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, where would these meals be dropped off if the students are virtual, Mr. Saris? Uh, I'm here, Ms. Joes. This is Karen Levenstein, George. I'll take that. Sure. Um, 
we're in the process of developing a procedure, Ms. Joes, and we're working with um, Mr. Uh, Doug Elmendorf and his team uh, relative to locations and the time, et cetera. But we are opting to do once a week and these frozen box meals, which we've seen and are, are um, inclusive of breakfast and lunch for the five days a week, um, are, are look to be very good and we'll have cooking instructions in there and so forth. And right now it's very all very new to us because when we're forward facing the children in school will have meals program there. This is just an opportunity to offer those youngsters that are virtual learning uh, program students. We'll have a plan ready to go and it'll be posted and communicated effectively. Thank you. And do we know how many vendors bid for this contract? We had three. We chose these two because we um, uh, tested them and they met our criteria of what we were looking for relative to the items. Entree, fruit, vegetable. The only thing will be milk will be fresh. That'll go along with these frozen meals. OK, thank you. Committee members, do you have any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Saris, please proceed with the next contract. Um, Mr. Dixit, did you want to take this one or would you like me to do that? I will definitely try to do that. Good evening. Uh, this is Pete Dixit. Uh, so the next contract is KSH 30719. And this has this has to do with a consent to the assignment from Fidelity Engineering Corporation to Fidelity Engineering LLC. The contract is for uh, chiller and cooling tower maintenance. This request does not include any change in amount or change in term. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, are there any more questions, committee members? Hearing none, please proceed with the next contract. Next contract is ASI 817-21. This is for job order contracting commonly known as JOC. Uh, this uh, just for the benefit of uh, board members. It's a collaborative construction project delivery method and it is acceptable by state and federal authorities for their grant funding. It gives us the flexibility to negotiate and agree upon a competitively bid unit prices. And it's a quick and fast method of doing construction. It combines design, construction management, and construction work itself all in one package. We do not try to encourage to use this contract, but from time to time when there's an urgent need of doing a project in a short amount of time, this is an efficient method of doing it. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, committee members, do you have any more any questions? Uh, Mr. Dixit, this is Mr. Kuhn. <clears throat> I see that the contract spending authority is for three million dollars. Are there um, projects that you already have in mind to use this contract for? So there are a lot of grants that are coming our way and sometimes the grant work has to be done quickly. Uh, sometimes it has to be done during summertime when the schools are closed. And this contract really helps us. Whenever we have time to design, bid and build, that's our preferred method. But if we do not have time for all of that, we try to do it. And I'll give you some examples for better understanding. Um, State has a program for aging school uh, program for maintenance and the timeline for some of those projects are really tight and not only timelines are tight they have to be done during the summertime when the schools are closed so this delivery method um, helps us in doing that some of the projects we did there's a health suite renovation we did for one hundred fifty five thousand dollars and that that can only be done during summertime and money comes to us in form of grants sometimes. 
So uh, with the SR2 and 3 grant money coming in, we are getting ready for that. OK, and have you done this previously before? Yes, we have. All right, so is this replacing a contract authority that we've that you already had before? Uh, let me look at the term of the contract to answer <coughs> the question. The term for yes, this. Yes, this is Mr. Saris, and it is replacing a prior uh, job order contract. Um, George, okay. it appears that it's a one year term and now it's extension of three years. If I'm reading it right. Well, we're still using the same uh, cooperative agreement, but they okay. have re reissued it. And so we're just aligning to that new uh, contract. So to answer the question, we have used this contract in the past on a limited basis, though. OK, thank you. Unfortunately, I'm I'm out of time since I have to leave my house to get to closed. So I'm going to say thank you all for your time. Um, Ms. Joes, I think you have enough people to to pass these forward so that we can all consider them in open. Is that correct without me? I'm sorry, could you repeat your question, Mr. Kuhn? Do you have enough people to move these to open? To yeah, we have a quorum. Correct, yes, we do have a quorum at the committee here. Because I'm leaving, I have to drop off. All right, yeah, I think Mr. Um, Offerman is on. OK, thank you. All right, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Kuhn. Bye-bye. Uh, Mr. Sarah, so Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the next contract, JBO 702-21, that is another consent to assignment. We're an architectural company that already has contract with us by the, by the name of Penza Bailey Architects. They are changing their name to Prime AE Group. And there is no change in cost or the term of the contract. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, committee members, do you have any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is a new contract. It's a competitively bid contract for testing, adjusting, and balancing of HVAC systems. Um, this contract will be utilized if uh, the team considers that there is a need uh, for balancing HVAC system. Uh, like I said before, we are getting ready for grant funding and we did not have this fund available in the past, so this will allow us to check and balance on the system if it can improve the performance in any way. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, committee members, do you have any questions? Hearing none, please proceed to the next contract, Mr. Dixit. Thank you. The, the next one is a right of way agreement, ARA-206-21. <clears throat> this is uh, the right of agreement that will allow Baltimore Gas and Electric to install and maintain a four inch underground conduit uh, or overhead wire for the existing wooden BGE utility pole. It will provide electricity for a new street light to be installed at Sharmouth Road near uh, Ridgely Middle School. So this is just the right, right of way agreement for BG&E to take care of their wiring and, and, and lights. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, do you have any questions? Well, hearing none, I will now entertain a motion to the recommend that items 1 through 11 be moved to the full board for approval. The question is to recommend approval of contracts 1 through 11 for board action. Those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Slade, please take the roll. 
Miss Jones, who made the motion and would have a second, please? Sorry, is there a motion to move this to the full board? Do I have? I'll make that have... motion, Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Do I have a second? I will second it. Um, I hope I have a quorum. Um, Ms. Mr. Slade. Here. Oh, he's here. Okay, Mr. Offerman is right here in front of my eyes. <laughs> um, Ms. Slade, please take the roll call vote. Ms. Hen. Okay. Mr. Kuhn, he's been excused. Mr. McMillian. Yes, please. Mr. Offerman. Say yes. Say yes. It's a roll call. Aye. Do you hear Mr. Offerman said I? I did. Thank yes, you. I did. Ms. OK. Um, and Ms. Right. Jones. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Um, there being three in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one through 11 will be moved to the full board. Is there any other further business? No, thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. There is no further business. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank thank you. you very much. Thanks.